Hey guys, welcome back. We always talk about what the number one secret is to getting rich. Today, we're going to be talking about the number one secret to investing long term. So we're probably going to have different opinions on this, but my thoughts on this are the number one secret to investing long term is being patient with the process by controlling your emotions. But Kirby, do you agree with my thoughts? Single time, like I said it myself. The number one thing is the psychology, the psychology of investing long term, not talking about straight trading, not talking about swing trading, not talking about option. I'm talking about long term trading. The ability to have patience, like Alex said, is very true, but you got to understand the psychology of the market for forever. I've been doing this 15 some odd years now. And for the life of me, I don't, well, I understand why, but people need to have a contrarian view on the market. So this is what I mean. What I mean is, and Alex, I'm going to share my screen here. All right, Alex, you can see the video, correct? Or yep. see the screen? Yep. All right, perfect. All right, so this right here is the S&P, SPY ETF. It mimics the S&P 500. You can invest in the SPY. You can invest in mutual funds that is indexed to the SPY. The SPY is just the top 503 stocks in the U.S. stock market. So here we go. But this is what happens. Alex, like you said, patience is is a virtue with long-term investing. But the, under, the understanding of it is the psychology. The psychology is the biggest thing. Like we always talk about if you do a straw poll of everybody, your family and your friends, the most emotional ones are the brokers ones in the family. Because people use emotions. If you can't control your emotions, if you can't control your psychology of the stock market, I mean, can't control your emotional psychology or psychology, period, then long-term investing is going to be a very big problem for you. And I'm explaining why here on the screen. All right, so this is what happens. All right, of course, everybody know during the COVID years when everything was going down, Everybody was trying to bail out. I remember I was on a plane headed to Europe during this time right here, these, this Friday here, and the market was going down. I'm trying to buy everything up while it's just selling off, all right? And most retail investors, this is what they do. They hear the news, they see the stock market, they see it going down, and then they're trying to bail out just to cut all their losses, cut all their losses, cut all their losses. But what the what's happening is the big the big institutions, the, the Warren Buffetts, the... Let me add a drawing here. Still getting used to this thing on thing. Yeah, here we go. The big institutions, the Warren Buffetts, the JP Morgans and things like that, they're loading up. They're loading up, loading up, loading up. And then the market starts pivoting. But remember, the retail investors start bailing out because they thought, you know, the world was coming to an end. This was, you know, financial crisis 2.0. This is everything Let's just save the money. People don't study history. So when the retail guys are bailing out here, bailing out here, the big guys are loading up, loading up, and then the market take off. The retail guys are still scared because even when we're here and we're back over this level, and this was only, what, from March to October, we got back over the level where the market started to crater. The big news media, they're still talking about this while the market is going up. So the retail investor missed out on all of this. And then the retail investor gets back in here. And then the momentum for the retail investors start going back up and they start buying. They think they're doing something. Now you got people mortgaging the houses, mortgaging the cars. You got the taxi drivers, the Uber drivers, everybody talking about the stock market. One word to note, if everybody is talking about it, it's probably time to exit. That's the same thing with crypto. That's the same thing with anything investing. But this is what happened. And Alex, you remember we was talking about in the class, I was saying I didn't like the market because all the retail people was in it and everybody's talking right. about it. But so what happens is, so then the news media start talking about how great the market is going and the market is going up and then more retail people pile in. The big guys is just transferring their shares from here, from here to here. The same big guys that got in here are transferring their shares to retail investors who just piling in right now because they're hearing that the market's at the all-time high, the interest rate so low is, go is going to keep going up. But right here is when 
Jerome Powell, this is Jackson Hole in November, Jerome Powell already gave the insight that they're going to start raising interest rates. Retail investors don't have a clue what's going on. So they're still buying the big guys who bought here. They're selling it to them here. And then we get 2022. And then it starts to cascade down for the entire year. So the retail investors that got here losing money in the exit day position, they swear off the stock market. Big guys get in again here when the retail investors get exhausted. They, they get back in in this level when the retail investors get exhausted. And then now the market takes off again. The same retail investors that lost money here. It's probably now, again, now the market is at an all-time high. It's going to start going across the news medias. Everybody's going to start piling in, talking about, oh, we haven't been this high in U.S. history. They're going to drum up the, you know, the election cycle because this is the election year, talking about how good the stock market is. And then we're back here at this plateau again, all-time highs, and now we're over this level where the retail guys exit. And then now retail people are going to start placing in. This is the... This is what's going on, and this has been going on for the past 100 years in the stock market. That's why it's 10% of the people have all the money, and the retail people get screwed. Retail people, I mean mom and pop investors, people that just have money in a 401k, have money in retirement accounts. It happens like this all the time. The retail investors get scared, thinking it's going to zero. The big guys step in, and then the retail, and then the big guys pass off their money to the retail investors at the highs. Then it goes down. Retail investors get scared, swear off the market. Big guys step in again. Market goes high. Now it's back to passing off to the retail people again because the news media assists these big guys. But if you understand philosophy or understand the psychology and control your emotions, you should be doing the opposite. You should be doing what the big guys are doing. When the market is crashing, again, this is the stock market. You're not going to an individual stock. This is the top 503. I know it's called the S&P 500, but this is the top 503 companies in the U.S. stock market. If these companies go to, of all these companies go to zero or this index or ETF goes to zero, we got bigger problems than money. You know, we probably got World War V popping off and money ain't going to help you anyway. So what you got to do is you got to have that reverse, that contrarian uh, ideology when it comes to this when the stock market is going down that's when you should have the the greed and i'm talking to retail investors the mom and pop investors out here that's when you should have the greed when you hearing the like you hearing the news media saying the market is going to market is at all-time highs you should have the greed when the, it's coming down so you should be buying like the big guys when it's coming down and then let it go up don't buy up here you should be buying down here let it go up now, because you're a long-term investor, you're not going to trade or trade off. But if you want to exit at a higher position, especially from 343 up to 481, and you want to exit, that's fine and dandy. You can never go broke taking a profit. Salute on you. But for the long-term guys, you buying down here, and then it's going to go up. And then, of course, we're gonna we always going to have a comeback. We're going to get to oversold condition. I mean, overbought conditions, and then we're going to have a sell-off. Pay attention to the financial news just a little bit. You don't have to be a savant in it. And then you get this cascade effect of going down. So you bought here. You didn't do nothing here for long-term investors. You didn't do nothing here, but you made money. The market is going to come down. Of course, the world's coming to an end. The Fed's raising interest rates too high. That This is the rhetoric and the and the things that people were talking about when during this time. The uh, Fed is raising interest rates too high. They're going to destroy the economy and it start coming down. Then start buying here again when all the retail people are exhausted. You just keep buying here and then you just let it go. And then now we're here at a at a plateau again. We probably go another three, five, six percent higher here. But then you just don't do nothing. You know, you could put, you know, your minimum, your minimum payments or whatever in there. And then you just do nothing. And then you wait for the market to come down again, maybe after the election cycle. It's going to get reaches a uh, floor again, maybe in this area at the 419 area, and then you buy again. And then that's when you start backing the truck up. You just got to have a reverse mindset of what's been going on, especially since the financial crisis. The retail guys is losing all the money. The top 1% is making all the money because they're doing exactly what I said. They're buying when the retail people get exhausted. Then it comes up here, they offloading or they're buying here. Then they're buying here. Every time the retail people get exhausted, they say, forget this. I'm tired of losing money. I'm just going to cut my losses because I don't want to go to zero. I don't want to lose no more money. They get exhausted. Then the, re then the big guys step in. 
This is the same philosophy that I teach. This is the same philosophy that I talk about. And that is how you win in a long-term game. Alex, what you got? Yeah, it following that strategy has helped me a lot. You always want to make sure that, just like with anything, you're buying low and you're selling high. A lot of people, they want to buy during those momentum times and they think that that's the way to buy. I've heard people say, I'm selling my 401k, I'll buy again once it goes up. That makes no sense at all. If you wouldn't buy anything in real life for a higher price and you know it should be, then why would you do it in the stock market with your money for the long term, for your retirement? I mean, it's it's with it's just it's literally just the economics of buying and selling. I mean, you go to a store and you see a pair of shoes. You don't buy it when it first comes out. You wait for it to get on a discount. Well, at least, you know, something, you know, that that's how I do it with with anything that I want. I wait for it to go to a discount for the demand to go down. And, you know, it's that, it's that same strategy. It's the same strategy of buying and flipping stuff. You want to buy at a cheaper price so you can sell high. And right. I think the stock market, like I've mentioned this on our channel before, those colors, I think the, that's, that's like perfectly set up because when the market's down, it's red and it just instills fear into people. And when the market's going up, it's green and it looks like, oh, it's time to make money. But in reality, like, just look at it the opposite way. You as a long term investor, you have to think for the long term. Like you said, if you're buying the S&P 500, the only way it's going to go to zero is if there's a World War Five, a nuclear war. In that case, you don't need to be worried about money anyway. But if you believe in America, if you believe in the economy, then buy the stock, hold it long term. Right. And. And that's and that's the thing that I've seen. I've seen it financial crisis, um, and then I got in on the low. And I and, and Alex, we always talk about. It. I always say I don't want the stock market to go up. And the reason why I don't want the stock market to go up is because I want to accumulate as many shares as possible at the cheapest price possible. I mean, looking at the past twenty years, fifty years, seventy years of the U.S. stock market, it's always went. It always gets to a higher level. I mean, of course, we got help from the Fed. We got help from the government pumping money into the economy, uh, printing money and all that. Inflation and then the price of goods going up. And then for people that don't know, is low interest rates and money being pumped into the economy, all it does is raise the prices of assets. That's all, all it does. I know pe a lot of people, you know, bitching, moaning, and complaining about the government printing money. Is it a bad thing? Yeah. But if you have assets, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing for the person that's working a nine-to-five job. It's a bad thing for the person that's struggling to pay rent and don't have any assets. But for the people that have own assets, it lowers the value of the dollar but increases the value of assets. That's why we saw during COVID when the the government and the Fed was pumping money to the economy. The interest rates was low. Stocks are an asset. It's not a physical asset like real estate, but it is asset. That's why it goes up. So if you own the assets and the government is still going to print money, they're going to print money to the end of time. We already know this. So you might as well be in assets to take advantage of it. And I'm not saying sit here and, you know, mortgage the farm to do it, but you can do it at a, you know, a steady pace, you know, 50, 100, 200 dollars a month, and you just keep investing, keep investing in good times and bad times. You just keep investing. My philosophy is I set a bar of how much money the minimum I'm going to invest a month. Let's say it's a thousand bucks. I'm going to, at a minimum, invest a thousand bucks every month. And then when times are good, I'm going to stay at times are good on the stock market. I'm going to stay at that thousand bucks a month. But when times get bad, and then you have, you know, Fed increasing rates and then the market turns down. You have another catastrophe, you know, regional bank failures, then the market goes down. Then I up that thousand bucks a month to four, five, six, eight, ten thousand dollars a month because I want to accumulate as many shares as possible at lower prices. So then when the price gets back over where I started investing ten thousand dollars a month, then I just go back to investing a thousand bucks a month. So I'm always engaged in the game and it always makes me want to know what's what's happening next what's going on and then i just keep rinsing repeating that process over and over again 
And that's helped my portfolio out tremendously. So then we said, guys, if you have any comments, let us know down below in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys on the next one.